nursing and non-invasive respiratory support. So we're going to understand the role that the nurse plays in support of the patient receiving non-invasive respiratory care. So there are a couple of different machines that can deliver non-invasive support. Some may be the home units that resemble a small box, and some are more elaborate hospital devices that have touch screens and can offer additional modes. At the beginning of your shift, have your respiratory therapist go briefly over the machine with you. Show where the settings are, either CPAP or BiPAP, if there's any FiO2 or if there's oxygen bleed in. Also, have a quick look at the circuit, where it connects so that you can be aware of any places along the circuit that there are possible for disconnections, either at the machine itself or if the patient rolls over in bed and the mask becomes disconnected from the circuit. The common features are going to be that the mode selected will be non-invasive. The patient will have a mask in place. The mask will be attached to a corrugated looking circuit that delivers the flow from the device. There's also going to be a leak from the whisper valve, which is where the mask and the circuit join. This allows for exhalation and clearance of CO2 gas. So you're always going to have a leak in this place in the circuit. The bedside nurse should know how to unhook or unclasp the mask on each side to allow for removal without having to adjust the headgear. Initially, when the mask is placed by your respiratory therapist, they will configure the headgear for the best setting so as not to exert too much pressure on the face and so that the mask lightly sits on the face so we don't have any pressure areas. They will also place Mepilex or a gecko under it if it is a gel or a silicone mask. If it is a sleep weave or fabric mask, no skin protectants are needed underneath that. The device can be turned off and will save the settings. So if your patient wakes up in the morning, needs the mask removed, you can unclip it and turn the device off. The machine will retain the settings. So when it is turned back on again, the same settings will be in place. When replacing the mask, slip the headgear over the head, place the foam barrier in place like Mepilex or if we're using a gecko, Ensure that the mask is in place, not over the eyes or the lip, and make sure that the device is turned on. If you have any questions, always call your respiratory therapist to the bedside. The barriers that we use under the mask, a silicone gel pad or a foam barrier. The gel that we use can protect the upper bridge of the nose, or it can go down the sides of the nose. We utilize the foam barrier because it can be easily removed when checking for skin integrity. Here you can see a graphic illustration of the foam dressing in place. Sometimes we cut a triangle that is mask shaped or sometimes we'll just do a V. Also if there's not protection under the headgear at the top, we can place a piece there also. Skin assessment should be every three to four hours and as needed. Your RT will be coming along every four hours and will do a skin assessment. Try to coordinate with them so that you can both check for the skin integrity. Skin care. We want to make sure that we have a comprehensive assessment and risk evaluation for our patients that are receiving non-invasive support. We want to make sure that the skin is intact. We want to inspect the skin when we do our Q4 checks. We want to note any irregularities that we may see. If there's redness, we can try a different interface or reposition the mask in place. Once we've had that, we can assess in one hour, see if the redness is resolved. If it's not improving, we can put a walk consult in. And then if walk gives us a treatment plan, we'll need to follow that. For patients that are receiving 24 hours non-invasive support, sometimes we are able to offer them high flow breaks. This is something to discuss with the medical team if we have no other way to alleviate any of the redness.